Here's our lineup. You might line up the political parties of New Zealand differently to myself. Entirely up to you. You don't have to agree. But how as a Christian am I supposed to make sense of this? If we were to analyse, and that's, that's how I think we have to make sense of it. Um, if we were to analyse even parties that sit here like New Zealand First, when you take a moral issue, only one votes conservatively, the rest vote liberally, off to the left. If you took the ACT Party, um, no one votes conservatively when it comes to the moral issues. Yet they believe that human rights need, and freedoms need to be protected. And, and the craziest thing about this line is that off to the left you go to socialism and into communism. And to quote William Federer, um, communism is just socialism light. To quote Anne Rand, who has authority to speak on this topic, um, communism is just a matter of how you rule people. Uh, socialism seeks to rule people by vote, while communism seeks to rule people by force. Right? So, so you've got there. But here's the crazy thing. On this scale, we're told that fascism, like Nazi Germany or Italy, sit off to the far right. As if you go this way to freedoms and you become a Christian, and I would have thought that Jesus would be at the far end of that one. But no, 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 dictatorships and killing us. But, but, but isn't, isn't fascism applying socialistic philosophies from Hegel and Machiavelli and all these others exactly the same as this? It's just that they start off by being honest and saying we're not going for an equal society. You see, this doesn't make sense, and so I've come to a conclusion. Cross out left and cross out right. And I think there's a quote here from, from Ronald Reagan in 1964, which is profound. And given the number of pages, I'm going to read from here because it's easier to find it. I suggest to you there is no left or right. There is only an up or down. Up to the maximum of individual freedom consistent with law and order, and down to the ant heap of totalitarianism. You see, on the left, George Orwell, who wrote the book 1984, said, what is the object of power? The object of power is power. To give people power doesn't work unless they have a moral ethic inside them that says, I am here for the good of the people, not just for the sake of power. Um, C.S. Lewis said, I'm doubtful whether history shows us one example of a man who, having stepped outside of traditional morality, meaning Christianity, and attained power, has used that power benevolently. Uh, to quote uh, Patrick Henry, 1877, at Virginia's convention to ratify the US Constitution, can the annals of mankind exhibit one single example where rulers overcharged with power willingly let go? A willing relinquishment of power is one of those things which human nature never was nor ever will be capable of. So, so a pursuit of power, if there's not an ethic to say I'm here to serve the people, doesn't work. But next slide, but, but capitalism and the other side doesn't work either. Um, Sholaniski um, has authority to make statements on this topic. And what he said is, untouched by the breath of God, both capitalism and socialism are repulsive. Because under capitalism, you've got greed, which leads to your equal opportunity becomes... Um, inequality because one works harder or is more intelligent or whatever and then you've got power and corruption so to bring you to a conclusion you've got four votes coming up and I want to suggest to you uh, a couple of quick thoughts on what you can do number one you've got to have a person vote this is a politician that you will vote for can I encourage you look at the values of the politicians look at their history of voting because that tells you what kind of a man or woman you are that they are that's what you're voting on. That will tell you also how prone to compromise they are. Now, not all compromise is bad. I will compromise drinking a coffee sometimes to have a cup of tea, right? But some compromise is bad. And without belief in a God, the further you get away from that idea, the further you away are away from protecting a nation from corruption. Secondly, you've got to vote for a party. And I would encourage that you look at the policies of the party. Uh, because that ultimately tells you the direction. This is to say, I don't think it's wise to vote on the basis of tradition, which is what you voted for last time. Um, what seems to feel good at the time, because media might be biased. Or to vote on the basis of the promises given in the last minute that would personally benefit you, because that's selfish. We should vote with our intelligence, because this is what's necessary for a democracy to actually thrive and to survive. 
You have two final votes. Now, I've tried very hard to be nonpartisan throughout this, right? And um, you can have Christians potentially in all the parties. You have to work it out. I'm not going to be a nonpartisan on the next two. You've got a vote on cannabis and a vote on euthanasia. I would simply encourage you regarding the cannabis bill, um, this is not about medical cannabis. That's already legal in New Zealand. Um, are we really going to succeed in keeping uh, the uh, cannabis laced lollies and fizzy drinks away from teens and children? Uh, why are the police so much against this and why are so many in the medical field and so many in the mental health area opposed to this? Regarding euthanasia, um, I would point out simply that this is not about limiting pain for people who are sick. That's called palliative care. It's a different topic. We have great palliative care. Maybe it can be better. Campaign for that if you want to. Uh, regarding euthanasia, how many unjust deaths should we tolerate? Because we know they will come with this. To point it out, one of the key arguments against the death sentence is the fact that you will end up with unjust deaths. So how many should be toler tolerable? Also, why are so many in the legal community against this law? Also, why are so many medical practitioners, and especially those involved with the elderly, uh, against this law? God initiated democratic government. The Bible is our basis for saying human rights exist. Jesus taught through that simple statement in a very tense environment under the Roman occupation about the separation of powers. We are called to be salt and light. While the church of God as a power structure must not marry itself to the state, it would be compromised by doing so. Every individual Christian has to be involved with politics because God cares about people and politics is supposed to be about people. We are called to be salt and light. You live in one of the most free nations on planet Earth, one of the most prosperous nations on planet Earth, one of the most equitable nations on planet Earth, and in all of human history. Can I encourage you as Christians that I believe you have a responsibility to be engaged with the issues of our nation?